Hello, my name is Sharon Hurst. Welcome back to the studio. We're going to have another tutorial today, something a little different. Um, I'd like to introduce you to something rather close to my heart. This is my rather lovely little boy. This is Socks. And today let's try using pastels and pencils. And imagine those whiskers and the little bits of fluff and fur. We're going to have a go at that. Something just to tweak our interest. And I'd like to point out that this one actually could be quite happily for beginners. So don't be afraid, don't look at that and think, oh, I can't do that. It's not the case at all. This one, I want to take you right through. Imagine that you were starting, you'd never painted a cat before. This is going to be the one. So, grab a coffee, let's settle ourselves down and we'll get cracking, shall we? Okay, here we are. We're going to start with the equipment we need for this particular project. I'm very keen on this here. Now this is pastel mat and if you buy it like this in a pad, it comes as a selection of papers and there is a tissue sheet between each one so that you can protect your work. Here we go. Pastel mat, it's very good. Comes in a selection of colours and it's made by Claire Fontaine. You'll find that this has got the most glorious texture. It's a velour and it, um, there are lots of little tufts like velvet and it snatches at the, the colour that you're using to, to hold it. It's very, very pleasant to use. Some things you've got to be very aware of. If you're wearing rings, if you're wearing bracelets, keep them covered and keep them out of the way because they will, for sure, they will mark your work. And we don't want that. So that's the pastel mat. Now here we've got the hammer mule and this is the velour trial pack. This is really rather good. All these colours here, um, a much bigger sheet, so you can see the size A3, isn't it, really, almost. And this here is very, very good to use because, of course, you can cut that and use it um, in two pieces. This is from the SAA. But those of you who aren't members, you can buy it anyway. But same thing, it's this pastel mat. Got a lovely, lovely texture to it. it here it is. Let's uncover what we've got here. And to feel it, it's soft and it's smooth and it's almost like suede. So very, very good. I've used, to, to get my image in, I've used Trace Down. Now this is Frisk Trace Down. Good stuff again. There we are. You can see that. And this is quintessentially a like carbon paper. But instead of it having the dark carbon on the back, it's actually white. You can see here that it's white. Very, very good for dark pictures. Again, do be very, very careful when you are working and you are drawing it out because it will leave marks on your work if you're pressing on it with your fingers. So just be aware of that. And you put that down, you put your picture on top of it like that and you draw around it and you come out with this little thing. For drawing and for working, I'm going to use two types of pencil here. So this is Colour Soft. Let me just put this back because I don't want to touch my work and, and spoil it. This is Colour Soft. We'll use these. A very, very wide core pencil. It lays down a lot of colour. So when we want to put lots of colour down, this is the ideal thing for that. And then I'm also going to be using Pro Colour. These are much harder, they're a harder pencil, both from Derwent, and this one I will be using for the details, for the eyes and for the whiskers and the bits and pieces. Much harder pencil, so when you put the mark down, you don't put so much down, it makes a thinner line, 
and you really have to work at it if you want dense colour. I know that Derwent do their light fast range but I don't want to use those because they're really rather expensive. They're the top of the range and I'm thinking to myself I'd like to introduce this to you so that you can enjoy this and not be put off with um, expensive measures. The other thing I'm going to use here is these Jaxel pastels. I want a pastel to lay in the dark, dense colour. This is this is the plan with the blacks. I want it. To, I want to be able to cover a big area quickly. So this is why I'm going to use these mixture of both. Now, interestingly enough, just a little tip. Did you know with your Derwent tins and tins of other brands, you'll notice that they have these two little notches either side of the lids and that's purely and simply because if you put your fingers on that, your thumbs and your fingers under here, if you ping, that is how you open the tin. So it's simple as that. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to be painting my little special little boy called Socks. Love him to death. He's mummy's boy um, and for Christmas my youngsters bought him this little bow tie and he didn't care at all. He wore it quite happily. And I just love this picture of him looking up and all sort of soft and super big eyes. It's the eyes that get me with cats. They're, they're super glowy eyes and these little noses. This is what we're going to have a go at today. So I've drawn them out. I have that there. I'm going to bring the iPad across so that you can see what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to put that there. This is for me to put my hand on because honestly you will mark this surface so easily you will be screaming before you're finished as a novice so just be aware of it. That on there. Now when we're working with pastels and colours like this it is a very very good idea to start at the top and work down because if you don't you'll find that you will be leaning on work and smudging it really really important with pastels and this is why we've got this so that hopefully I won't smudge any of this too much. The first thing I'm going to be doing is looking at my little boy and I personally want to go in here and lay some of the lighter areas down, the greys, so that I can see where I'm going with it. Now I really really want to do this in a simple easy manner so that it doesn't become too, comp too much of a complicated project I want this to be for beginners as well. I've got my pencils here and I've used a glass jar and I have, I've chosen my pencils, they're all in here and they've been sharpened to within an inch of their lives. And I have stumps, these lovely cardboard stumps, I'll show you those. And I have this sandpaper, that's a clever little tool, show you that in a minute. But I have them all ready. Use a good quality pencil sharpener, so something like this. This is ele an electric Derwent pencil sharpener. Again, this is rather good because it really does give you the sharpest, sharpest point, And you want that for this, this particular project. Start at the top, and I'm looking at this area here with his fur and his hair up here. Quite a pale grey, so let's start with this. And I'm going to lay in my colour, so pop it in pull it through down here, some through here, and some through his ear. I'm pressing quite hard because this is the um, pro colour, so it's, it's quite a hard pencil, so I'm laying that in. And I want to come down the side of his face because this is quite a light area through here as well. And you're seeing the light through his fur. Where he's sitting here on my chair, um, the light was behind him. So you're getting this glorious kind of fuzz. This look of fuzz. Up through here. Through this area here. It. And we've got some light on his little nose. I've got some lights down here on his nose, this area here. It comes down his face, down his forehead, to 
to about here. And I've got light, a lighter area here by his eye. I've got light bound here, so let's just come into that area there and put that in there. And I've got a little smudge of light next to his nose. I chose this picture deliberately because there's not too much contrast in it. And it means that for you and I, we're not going to have too much to worry about. We'll be able to put a lovely dark in here and it should do us. I want the eyes to be the main feature here. So I want that through there as well. And what we can do at this point is take these lovely little stumps and you can come in and you can have a smudge. And this will help get rid of the white lines underneath. So again, pr pressing quite hard, come in, smudge it, nudge it, budge it. That well-known firm of solicitors. And that's one of my standard jokes, that is. And one day I'm going to come across somebody who says, Oh, I know then. I can see it coming. Story of my life, that is. So through here, just smudge, smudge, smudge. Oh dear, sorry about this, everybody. Should have turned notifications off, but I'm not doing it now because it means stopping what we're doing and I'm having fun. There we are. So that's our first port of call. So we've got that glow around our pussycat. Good start, good start. I think that I would like to go up into his ears and put a little bit of colour up there so that we can see um, we've got a bit of contrast here. Now this is tricky dicky this is because the colours here of his ears are something quite alternative. We're going to have to probably make the colour ourselves. And in his ears, I see a pink and a blue and all sorts. So let's mix it. Let's mix and match. This is the most glorious sort of bright pink. And I want to, well, it's not really, is it? It's mauve, fuchsia, fuchsia colour perhaps. And I want to pop that in there. Now it's really important when you're working with pencils that the further down the pencil you hold it, the less you're pressing and the smoother and the wider the stroke. So if you just want to cover a large area, come down, come down, come down the pencil so that you're just working from the end. If I come up here, I'm going to get a much bigger pressure on the paper and all of a sudden I get a bigger mark. So just be aware of that. I want a little bit of colour in here. I said I could see um, a blue in there, and I can. It's almost like maybe an indigo-y colour. So this one, I want to come in here and just knock all this back here, particularly in this bit of his ear, where it goes down into his head, so there. And again, darken that, because this is really, apart from these eyes, the only colour on my little puss cat. Now let's see how that works. We're going to go back to this and smudge it, and that will blend the colours. That will push the colour into the velour, so we should lose the um, strokes that we've made with the pencil. Like that. So that's pretty, but I think now we're too kind of purple, so we need to knock that back into some, put some brown on there, I think. So I'm going for dark brown, and I want to come in here and lay that on top. And this will make it a little more dull, darken it. There we are, so we're going to do that. And then we'll see what happens when we blend that. It's all experimentation, you know. Um, you have to look at a colour and imagine how you would make it from other colours when you're using pencil. Because you can bet your bottom dollar, even if you had a set of pencils that's 72 
172, you still wouldn't have the colour that you were wanting and that you were looking for. I'd lay money on it. I bead as well. I work with beads and make jewellery and you can bet that whatever I'm looking for, I've never ever got the right colour. My husband says to me, how many beads does one woman need? And I don't really understand the question. I don't know what he's talking about. I've, I've never got enough beads. So I'm coming in there with this red. Just down the edge of the ears. I'm going to just bring you in a little bit. Sorry, I'm making you dizzy. So that you might be able to see a little more clearly. And I want a little bit of red because the light was behind him. So you're actually seeing a little bit of the blood red from his ears, through his ears. It's the light shining through. So that gives us that. Smudge it in, that's grand. That's an awful lot darker down this side of his ears, isn't it? So we're going to go now to, we'll try it with this. This is a, the black pencil, Colour Soft. So let's just have a bit of control with this. Come down here. Colour Soft will dust, they're softer, so you'll, you'll see these bits of dust on your work. It's all right, doesn't matter. We can blow it away, but blow it away. Don't rub it away. If you rub it, you'll find suddenly that you've got a mark on your work. I want to get rid of these white lines. So now I'm coming in and I'm pressing a little bit harder. Come down this edge of the ear. You've got this pink, little pink area here. Let's see if we can find a pink. I need this kind of colour, don't I? There you go, that little touch there. Maybe we'll just introduce a little bit of it there. Now I'm coming back with my dark. Cats have this strange area here on their ears where it almost splits, haven't they? Put that in there up through here. Now I want more colour so I'm pressing, pressing. Come up and round. When you draw out your cat don't press as hard when you're putting the white trace down on but I have because I wanted you to see it. I really really wanted you to see it. This is dark colour here. So again, pressure, and then through here we have this dark area of the ear, and we'll soften all this again in a minute, and this is dark up through here. You need the contrast, dark against lighter. It's the law of painting and art, light against dark, dark against light, always. It's the law. So now we'll take this. I'm going for the other end of the stump now. And I want to just soften, soften, smudge it, nudge it and budge it. When we have dusting, just blow. This, um, Paper doesn't take very well to um, rubbers, so don't be misled and, and think that you can get away with that very easily. It's easier if you need to make a mark to scratch the colour away. Okay, so I'll do that. And this job is layers. So we've done one layer and we have that amount of coverage, you have to go back and you have to do it again. And sometimes when you smudged it like this, you have to go back and you have to do it again. And that's just the way pencils are. You've got to be patient, 
you've got to be um, cool and calm and you're filling in every little dip in the paper. You're just fully loading it, loading it up. So that's our pencil. We'll come back to that in a little while because we can tweak all that and we can work on that. That's all right. But what I want to do now is bring you down into the cat space and we're going to add a little more down here. And this time we're going to work, let's do the eyes first because I want to keep them really clean and I don't want to be smudging and nudging all of this around. So let's do those eyes first. And this time I want to come in there and choose my greens carefully. Let's start with the light colour. You've got this gorgeous glow around his eyes. Let me just move things around a bit so that you can see the eyes a little better. I'm going to try and pull you in a bit. She said taking you out. Let's get the board right so that you can see it. Oh, it's stuck to the drawing board. <laughs> Let us How's that? I've got this lovely gold here, this uh, golden colour, and I want to pull this up through here. And I've come further down the pencil because I want control of this, and I want to introduce that colour through here. And I want some of it around here. Now if that's too yellow, I now can lay the green in on top. So I'm going to run that over there. So that gives me a greeny gold. And then coming into the eye, I want to use two greens. So a lighter green and a darker green. And this time, coming up through here, and then around this area here, And then right up snug, close, close to the pupil. You just want to make it a little darker. He's got definite rings around his eyes, this cat. When you take a photograph of him and you can get as close as you can, you can see it. But cats are blighters, aren't they? Because every time you get the camera out, they hear the focusing, I think, and they scarper. They're menaces. Trying to get a good photograph of a cat, just the be all and end all. If you don't have a moggy at home and you'd like to um, have a good photograph, there is um, an application that you can get on your iPads and your tablets and your phones, and it's called Pixabay. And it's all royalty free photographs um, that you can use for your artwork. And it's well worth a little look. I had a look last week for a, another demo and I discovered that they I asked for a cat's face and I landed up with 17,000 photographs to plough my way through. So there's plenty, plenty there for you to see. And well worth a look. So we've got that lovely green of the eyes. I want to now bring in white. I'm going for the soft white. This is the colour soft because I want to lighten up that edge now. So I like the colour, but I want it to be lighter. So this is the colour soft, softer pencil. So what that means that when I go into this, and I'm coming over the edge of the green, it means that it lays down more colour. If I used the harder pencil, I'd get a much harsher line and it would mark the velour and it wouldn't put so much light down. Now I want this to be a bit even lighter around here, so I'm coming in, a little more pressure. 
closer down the pencil. That will give me the pressure to lay that in like that. Now we leave it at that because what we'll do is we'll come back later and if we need to balance it, we can do that, that's fine. But I would like to take the black and I am going to use black because my cat's eye, I don't care what anybody says, the inside of my cat's eyes is black, jet black. And I'm coming in here with the exception to my highlights. And what I'm going to do is, the pencil's quite flat at the moment, lay in a bit of the colour. So let's get that in, like that. So we'll put that much in. And then I'm going to use my pencil sharpener, to show you how this works. We simply pull that back, push this in and it gives you the most amazing, wicked point. And this will allow me to come around the edges and give my little kitty cat a good hard edge around the eye. I also notice that that is ever so slightly blurred on this eye. It's not solid. Just going to do that and soften it. Now, if that softens it too much, you can come back, you can add more colour, that's all right. This eye, now this one is really, really quite sharp, sharply defined. So that's all right, I'm not going to smudge that too much. So through there, Clip that edge, make it sharp, make it tight. You might even want to go into the harder pencil to really, really ram that home. And then the next thing I'm going to do, because his eyes were looking at the lights in the room, I'm going to actually put the lights in like that. It's a set of lights up on the ceiling. So that gives us that, that effect there. Under this eye, we have shadow. This top lid casts a shadow. So at this point, before I go any further, coming in, and with the harder pencil, just laying in shadow over the eye. So just like that, and then up, um, right underneath the lid, come back to your black. Pull that in around there. Okay. So for now, we'll leave that and we'll go and we'll move on and we'll find something else to work on. The next thing, really, that's important to get right is their little nose, dear little nose. And for this, I'd like to start off with the grey and I want a little light grey tip on the nose there. So grey there and I'm going to put white right in the middle of it. And a good way to blend a colour pencil is to take one colour over the top of the other. There we go, so that gives us that harsh white highlight there. This side of the nose is a bit paler than the other, so over here, if I put the pale colour on underneath, when I go over with the darker colour, it will lighten it, so that's okay. And then there's a little bit of light there. Come back in, and now we're using the black, and I want to nudge and budge and smudge that up to the grey there. Okay, and then we're coming through here, nudge it and smudge it up to there. Go over the top if it's too harsh, that's all right. Here we are at the lighter area, so I want to paint over that. It's funny, isn't it? When you're doing pencils, why is it called painting? 
One of the oddest things, that is. But hey-ho, who am I to, uh, to question it? Just asking. Here we are. Let's give that all a bit of a smudge. Just to push it into the fibres. Like so. We have this here. So that's really quite dark. That's that's the middle of his nose. And we've got this dark area here. And his little nostrils are very, very dark. Very, very dark. So we have a nose. Who knows? There you go. We have a nose. This is dark through here. This is the division in his muzzle. And then the next thing I'm going to do is attack this with the pastels. And there is method in my madness. Please excuse my hands, sorry. I need to come out a bit now. Okay, enough so that you can see the moggy. And this time we're going to come in here and we want to use our pastels, our black and our white. And he is white too, bless him. With this, I'm just going to push it into the fibres of the, of the balloon. So I'm coming in. Come up to meet, come up to meet your lighter colour that you've put in until they meet each other. And we'll smudge that in a minute. Round the eye. We can do that with smudging as well. Through here. And I'm going to do half of the face at a time so that I don't suddenly land up with all this black everywhere that I can't cope with. Out into the fringes of this fur, this rough. And this is all pretty solidly black from the picture. So here we go. There's a little bit of light there in the corner of his eye. And this comes through to the white of this fur here. He's got a definite moustache, this cat. Because what we'll do is we'll see how much of this we can push into the fibres of the um, actual uh, velour. And if we can use some of it just to smudge and pull across. So we'll try that too. So over through to his moustache. Okay, so we've done that. And now we're going to take this and I want to come in here and I'm going to really, really work it. So round the eye. So just half of the face at a time. So you see what I mean? You can, you can pull it. You can smudge that and pull it up yourself. Let's get the main depth of colour sorted first. The areas that we know we want really, really dark. So just pull it, feed it, feed it in. This is a bit lighter here, so leave that be for now. Pull that up into the lighter area. Pull this out into this lighter area. This, I want it all smudged. If you go in the direction of the fur, have a look closely at the picture and think about So if, you, if I'm going to work this round in circles, I could make that look quite strange. So I'm not, I'm going to pull it as though I was working the fur. Brushing the cat's fur. And now you can hear the texture of the velour as the stump goes across it with this. Now if you want to get in there and clean these edges up, we can either use the other side of the stump or you can have a little go at this wonderful piece of creation here and the dirty bit of your stump, you simply use the sandpaper I mean, make one of these yourself at home, you don't need to buy one. 
but make sure that you clean up so have the bin next to you so that you can bang that out and it's clean for next time but now I'm fairly clean and this time I'm going to push this back you could also have a cloth so that you can come in and you can scrub clean and push this back into your fur Pull some of it out so that you're... Can you see what I'm doing? So pull some of it so that it's... There you go. And you see, what I might do here is use really the side of the stump like this to smooth all that out now. This is when I would smooth it. I've got colour on there, I can pull that up and into this area if I wanted to, to help that along. This is where I would be using that now to just put grey in there and to come in here around this area and to put some grey in there rather than black, like that. There we are. Okay, so we've done that side of his face. Now we've got the dark down here. We had grey down there. We've lost that a little bit. So what we'll do here is go back into the grey pencil and put some highlights back down there. And we can work into that again with our stump, soften that edge so that it's not too hard. And then if we come back with this, I had grey down there, I just want this up through there. And he's got an area of his eye through here. And then that comes down through there, down his nose, hard down his nose like that. And then that is a block of colour through here. But I'm going to control that with the stump. So coming back into this, nudge it, smudge it, budge it, pull it, smooth it and blend it. Sounds like a cookery programme really, doesn't it? We've got that through lighter there. Look at this here. That flicks up into the lighter fur through there. This needs to be blended down here so how about we come into that from this side and blend it this way. It's a bit cack handed but trust me it's, it's a good plan and that darkness comes up through there. Now I'm just going to pick up some colour and I'm going to run that up through there and that comes down onto his muzzle through here. He is a beautiful little boy. We've been training him to um, walk on a lead and to come in the car and whilst my mum's been poorly in a home he's been coming to visit and he's been a kind of um, visitor cat, which has been quite nice. And uh, very brave, not freaked out by it all at all, which is um, really quite exciting. So I'm coming in here, pull the darkness up to that area there. So we've got our lighter area down here. I need to just pull that soft a little more because it's not quite that light. These are areas of highlight, but it's still on really dark black fur. So we've got to be a bit careful of that and make sure we maintain it. Pull that up a bit through there a bit more. Soften all of that a bit more. There we are. Okay. Colour on the stump. 
So now I can actually pull that through there, add a bit in there and in there. So just enhancing what you've already done. Because you can paint with this as well, so that's okay. And then the next thing we want to do here is that is quite a light area through there. So I'm going for my light grey pencil here and I want to pull some greyer hairs up through there. That makes me realise there's also shadow, quite a bit of shadow on that eye. So let's take the dark grey and I'm going into this eye and I want to introduce quite a bit of bluey grey shadow into there. And even that, I might still go for the black pencil. Let's do that. A bit more in here to balance it. And then I'm going to go for the black pencil and this time I want to do some of that. Because it's the dark that makes your lights look light. We're back to that again, light against dark, dark against light. So there we go, we've done that. Around the edge of the eye, ah, now that's interesting, look, because we've got black, black, black around here. So I'm using the sharp, hard pencil, because I want that to be very dark. I'm pulling you in again, if that's all right. So I want that dark, dark around there. And then this area here is really, really dark. So that's his brow. Might even go for the colour soft on that one because that will be, that's it. And then through here, I want to come up with the dark, around here and this area in here has got a kind of pinky brown in it so what we'll do with that is come back to the brownie colour that we had for the ear and I'm going to drop that in there and use the small stump to just soften and blend and if we want to make that look a bit more limpid and um, living, I'm just going to pull in a bit of the red, that's fine. And we'll work our way down a little now, so I'm bringing you back out again. And what we'll do now is work our way down the face. And this is all white, his little whiskers and his, his beard. Um, his moustache. I need a clean bit of stump. So let's go this end this time. Because I want to come down here and coming into it this way and soften that edge. Soften this. So I don't have a hard edge. And then my next plan is to come in with the white pastel. And this time I want to introduce this lovely white. There's a little flick of white out through there. And we've got this area up into here. Down and round. Up to his nose. There we go. And then we've got this through here. And we're going to blend that so exactly the same way. Oh, I need to clean that, don't I? Otherwise, that's going to be lovely to put the black into that. What a mess. Okay, I'm going to 
blend all that, feed it into the paper, I like the way pastels are so very, very positive. They, they bring up real positive white, real black. I mean, that black is black, isn't it? It's not just grey or dull. It's, it is black. And I'll just pull that through there. Have a little huff and a puff at it, like that. Now, this bit here, this is white, but it's a bit grey because it's in shadow. So we can do a bit of that. We'll pull the white down. We can even take white from the pastel and then pull some of the grey black down into it to make it grey. So that'll do for now. We have black round here. Oh, something just happened on the news. And I want to bring my black through here. Oh, that's great. That's lighter down that edge. Look at that. So, black. Grey. And we'll blend this time by coming back with the black and putting the black into the grey. Now lift off, lift off, be lighter with your finger. Lighter, 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 so that you're just laying a little bit of that on top. His nose is too high there. Let's get rid of that, looks, he looks weird. Not having my cat looking weird. And then this through here, this is black with the grey edge again. So soft pencil, this is the colour soft, and I want to come through with real black through here and that's coming up that's right in the sun just looking at that to make sure that's right so that's that dark ridge brow that's okay and then through here and again going going with the direction of the fur and then I'm going to use the stump to blend that Mind that edge of that eye. There you go. So blend that into the grey and pull. That's not dark enough, you see. I don't want that darker. It's right there and it's pitchy. So I'm coming in there just with a bit of pastel so that I can use the black stump. That's a good name for a gin, isn't it? Black stump. Quite fancy that. There you go. There. Okay. Brilliant. Bravo. Now, down here, really dark again. Really, really dark again. So I'm coming in and I'm going to solidly ladle, ladle black in there. all around his little moustache. Solid black in there that we can use the stump with to feed it in. So we use this, get your colour sorted first, blend it in, feed it into the fibres, start that way, again following the curve of the fur and the curve of his chin. it up to the edge of his little white bib well moustache and then I'm going to smooth and blend and then just soften that edge up because we've got to come in there now with a white, but the white's going to have to be grey. So how are we going to do that? Let's start with the white first. Let's put it in. Don't worry about down here for now. Let's just do his rough. Just 
pop that in. And we're slowly working our way down the page. Let's watch that because that's going to be quite grey in there, isn't it? Have to be a bit careful with that. Now we've got this dirty stump. So this now might pay dividends, mightn't it? Because when I come in with this, and if I'm a bit careless over my shading and my blending here with that dark edge, I'll be pulling the shadow down, this dark colour down. So I could make that work for me. Pull it through. Give yourself the shadow. Leave the tips white because we know that they're going to be quite white. This is quite white around here as well, isn't it? And we'll titivate all of that in a bit. But for now, it's given us the shadow under that. Okay. So what we'll do next is we'll have a little bit of a work worry about this collar and the rough and think about that next. Because this is over to this side, I don't think I need that for a minute, so I'm going to get rid of my piece of paper. Over this side, I'm going to work this first so that I'm not leaning on this while I'm trying to work this. That's the plan here. And my next step is going to be, this is white as well down here. So let's put the white in through there. So pop that in, and again using the stump, clean, clean stump this time, because I want this to be quite white and bright. I'm going to pull some of this out. really is quite long haired so so the fluff is fine the the more texture you can get into this is fine because it, it, it makes him look fluffy <sighs> there we are and we're black down here and again that's very black down in this area here so pop it in and then this time feed it in and I'm going to just pull it up into some of this fur. So I'm now painting with mess. Putting shadows in his fur with the goo, with the mucky bits. A bit of differentiation here might not hurt, so this fur goes underneath the rough fur. do us that will do us for now let's work a little bit here I would like to bring the white just up to the red of and I'd like to fade this out a bit because I don't want this to be part of the picture so I'm just going to clean that on my cloth and then I'm just off the paper get rid of it he's back I'll have to do that in a minute because I don't really want to get too involved with all of this because then I'm not going to be able to paint 
my lovely um, collar. Let's put these away for a minute and I want to use, um, let's see, Mm -mm -mm. I need, I'd like something a bit more orangey than that, to be honest. So how about this? I could, in fact, fancy doing this with pencils. Let's see. The lighter areas. Make them light. Enjoy it. These are lovely colours. Enjoy it. So through here. I'm pressing quite hard here. I want dense colour on the paper. I want it to really be exciting. So that through there, a little bit of highlight here, and then this is light, isn't it? Not bothering with the sequins that are on this collar. Um, don't make a picture too complicated. Just do the bits that mean something. I don't want to worry about those at the moment. So now if we take the red, I can come in here and I can fill in the gaps. I'm going to feed that up into the fur. And remember, I'll be blending this later, so not too many stresses about that. Pull it into the fur like that. So that it makes it look as though he's rough as fluffy. There we are. Down here. That's quite dark, that bit. We'll paint over that in a minute with a bit of blue, I think. down here this is the part that's actually around his neck so again I need to put that up into put it in underneath mind what you're leaning on I'm, I'm being a bit careless here so you need to be a bit careful to be this lovely bright spot. Let's have a blend of that and then we'll see where we can go from there. Start with the lighter colours first. The dark ones don't mess up the lights. Let's blend those first. Like that. I quite like mixing pencil and, and the pastel because it gives me control over both elements. I like being able to go in and fiddle about with the little bits. Um, yes, you could do all of that with pastel pencils. Absolutely no problem with that and no reason why not. So that's personal choice, but um, I'm quite happy with the pencils. I've got lots of pencils and they work quite well on this um, medium so uh, not worried about that at all. Now the shadows I'm going to go for a blue I think I might go back to the indigo for that one you know and here I'm good let's try it so if I lay that over the top what happens when I blend that? Yeah not too bad a blue or a purple is always a good one for a shadow, everyone. So there we go. I want a bit of shadow in up here. When you're doing this, you take more time and more care over it than I am. I mean, I'm just slamming it down so that you can see what I'm doing. But um, when you're working it, 
bit of finesse, please. So one colour over the top of the other, softly and gently, and then you can smudge. Now you can also, if you want to, on this kind of um, work, you can go into it and you can blend with something like the pencil blend, zest it pencil blend. And you just put that on a brush and gently, gently feed in small amounts to soften and blend. But when you're working on this kind of um, texture, you need to be careful with that. Don't put too much on. Be death to it. So just be careful. And I keep a separate brush for that. Zest it is made with orange zest oil. So it smells absolutely divine. Um, but it's very, very good for blending pencil because it, it, it literally turns it back into an emulsion and um, it, it kind of melts it. And you can slide it around and you get some lovely effects. So that it's well worth experimenting with. few real darks in there as well to make it stand out. So we can blend that too. And just keep working it. So if you don't like the texture of the grain on the collar, that's easy. You just go back in with the reds and the oranges and you work back over the blue with the orange to feed the colour into all of the nooks and crevices of the paper. If a little bit of it is too dark, you've made a mistake, go back in with a lighter colour and you can paint over it, look. So you can get rid of the edges that you don't want. If you don't like bits like this, come in with the lighter colour and you can cover it. If I go in there with more colour, it makes it even brighter and makes it stand out some more. So that's up to you. If you did decide that you wanted the texture of these sequins, you're just going to do that by creating little round, the idea of little round, some of them dark and then some of them light. So in some areas go in and introduce the lighter ka where the light's hitting them. So that would give you a texture on the collar if you wanted to. That collar needs to be quite a lot darker in some areas, so that would need to be worked over again. But for now, for time constraints, let's just move on. This here is all going to be just nice black. So again, I'd come into that. Snug it round the edges of that. And I'd also like to feed that away too. So just so that that blends away. So let's, let's pull it down to a certain degree. Let's go back in with the stump. Feed it in. Work it. Like that use the stump to snug it right around the edges of our little cat's collar. Oh no, not on my clothes, no! There you go, we're going to do that with the fur. And then I want to wipe that on my cloth because I'd like to use the edge of that again just to take it away, clean it. I want to use this edge to Soften all of that. I'm 
going to take my cloth to soften that edge some more. Oh my goodness, you'll find all your own ways of doing this and making these things do what you want them to do. It's up to you, everyone. But now the final, final thing that you need to be doing with this is thinking about where you need all these lovely little bits. He's got... Watch what you're leaning on. You need to shatter this fur through here, all of it. So lightly, lightly, lightly for little strokes that are paler. And then for anything that's harsher, he's got these little white marks, little white hairs all through here. And this is where I'd be using my Pro Colour because anything else isn't going to hack it. We've got a piece of paper. Let's see what I've just done. Look, see? Do not do it. Keep your hands off it. Through here, I want to go in there to the corner of the eye. So that's white, but you've also got this sharp, sharp shadow around there. So we need that, we need that. That makes the eye stand out. We've got a little bit of light in round there. I've got little white hairs all up here, like so. So let's put those in. Is the highlight there enough? Yes, probably. It's not bad. So right, that will do. These little hairs here, all teeny tiny little shattered hairs. This here is all little bits of fluff. So again, feed it out. And these pencils really stand out nicely. These hairs tend to do this. So again, let's do those. Just give that a little bit of flicking there. This out through here. You can just generally come through here and titivate that if you'd like to. Make some of those edges sharper. So that would be fun too. Oh look, now have a go to town on this. Out through this edge as well here. Keep your pencil nice and sharp. And these are random. So don't get into a pattern with it. Some are short. Some are flicky. You can have some out through here. What a twit. Keep your hands clean, everybody. Practice what you preach, Sharon. So just a few little light hairs through here. I'd like to have some little light bits up through here. That's it. Shall we bring some down out through here as well? Just a few like that. He's got just a couple of highlights here. So there's one in the corner of the eye. And then we've got one, two. Just some little ka of light there. That makes a difference, doesn't it? And I've got some little bits of highlights through here as well. Come Again, I'm, I'm not this tight to the pencil. I'm up here because that takes the weight off, takes the pressure off the pencil. That's a little lighter through there. And we've got little hairs coming out from his muzzle here. Like that. 
And then, of course, the big, big thing is these gorgeous, gorgeous ears and whiskers. And with this particular cat, he's got some super duper fluffy fur. And we have long white hairs. out here from his ears, through here, like this, and we want plenty of these. And as we introduce all these little hairs, our pussycat slowly, slowly comes to life, doesn't he? Now some of these are long and they flick. Oh, how lovely are they? <laughs> I want to get my fingers in there and, and have a cuddle. This one comes down and round down and round and curves round like that. And make them join his ears by coming in with the stump and just softening all those edges and blurring them into the dark so that they look as though they're actually joined to the cat. Finally, finally, sharp, sharp pencil and I want to come in here, pressure this time, Use pressure. Think about where this is coming from. I'm coming from here and I'm putting in a whisker. In from here and I'm putting in a whisker. Another one. Sharp. Keep turning the pencil round so that you get the, the finest, finest line. Sharpen again. Needless to say, the pencils do not last long because you really, if you're using them like this, it gets through them. That's maybe a bit low on his face, actually. So let's just see if we can use the stump to take them up. I put them in too low. It's better. And we want that to be quite, quite light there. So that's it. Good stuff. So we've got that. And then we've got these gorgeous, delightful little whiskers out through here. One that's broken. Don't know how he did that. Cats. They've got this strange thing going on here, look. They have little whiskers. This is the long whiskers, but they have these little ones coming out just from the side of their cheeks. So from here, I want to take one and two, and then I want to bring out one lovely long one, two lovely long ones, and then we're going to bring these through here. Now this tells us that we've forgotten something. Grab that stump, and if you look at a cat's muzzle, their, fur, their hair, their whiskers, grow out from their face here, and they grow in rows. So what we want to do here is just using the dark of the stump, come through, and then come through, maybe for a second row through there. And then we'll introduce one through here, and one through here and that's where those whiskers grow from so from out of here and we just pull them round let's do our very best with this some of them keep turning that pencil round he's got seriously seriously long whiskers so through here he's also got little whiskies from his chinny chin chin out. And this is why I wanted all this space on the side here so that I could really go to town with these lovely little bits and pieces out through here. There we go. And ladies and gentlemen, that is how I would work my way through a kitty cat's portrait. Let me see if I can move it and I will pull the focus in for you so that you can see it a little better. Up, there we go. And let's just pull it in so that you can see the eyes and the nose and those whiskers. 
and then bring it back so that you can see my darling little socks as he is, my lovely little pussycat. Thank you.